and today we are going to be working on this. And this is a McFarland Toys Warhammer 40,000 Primus Primaris Space Marine Hell Blaster Artist Proof uh, action figure. And McFarland Toys started doing these uh, Astartes figures. I want to say I think some point last year. That those might have been the Bandai ones. But I know they have been coming out. They've been readily available, obviously, this year. And the neat thing with these figures is not only can you get artist proofs of them, and the ones that I've seen are this particular Astartes, uh, the other version of the Astartes that comes with a bolter rifle and a chain sword. Uh, you can get a Battle Sister, and you can also get a Necron. But you can also get ones that are pre-made or pre-painted ones, that are also the same price, so that's really neat. Cause so if like you're a fan of the Ultramarines or the Salamanders, they have those already available for you. And also, um, I know they have a couple of Blood Angels because one, there's one on the back of the box, and two, I've seen one with like big fancy crest on the back of his head and all that stuff. But yeah, I think it's really neat that they did actually make these artist proof figures because. I guess they realized, hey, people are buying the figures and then just constantly customizing them, so why not just make one for them to customize? So, I think that's really actually kind of neat. But in order to help me along with this journey, I also picked up a little reference material as well. So, I picked this up, uh, the Codex Supplement for the Dark Angels, and FYI, Nothing in this video is that is sponsored whatsoever. Uh, this is just, you know, letting you know what I am using to try and figure out what am I doing. Uh, but I have to say, I've thumbed through this book a couple of times, and it's really neat. I gotta have, I gotta sit down and just like read all the lore beginning to end, probably a couple of times too. But I gotta say, this is actually a very, very nice book because. About 50, maybe like 45% of this is just lore and history of, you know, kind of what the Dark Angels are, where they're located, the Raven Wings, the, the Death Wings, the supplemental companies as well, uh, which I didn't even know existed, uh, the iconography, uh, all, you know, all that kind of stuff, which is really what I, what I enjoy about Warhammer. Uh, they also have in here the game mechanics for Raven Wings and Death and uh, Death Wings. So you're getting honestly best of both worlds if you, you know, if you're either in one one camp, or the other, or both. This is honestly a great pickup for it. So, but I'm basically using this mainly for one part myself, so I can better understand the chapter and company that I have aligned myself with for introducing friends over on George's channel. By the way, go check it out. Link will be in the corner. Uh, but also, I needed reference material for Ravenwings, because I don't know why, but my Google Foo sucks when it comes to looking up this stuff, because the best I could come up with was just this one basic look straightforward of what the Ravenwing Astarte looks like. And it really doesn't give a whole lot of info on it. It's just all black armor, the company emblem on the left pauldron, and on the right pauldron, you kind of see something, but you really don't know what else it is. Thankfully to the book, I now know it's the company name, or company number. But, yeah, it's like one of those things of, like, I really wanted, like, a solid reference guide to work with. So, I'm going to be using that to at least give me an idea of what to do with the armor because I don't want to do just basic armor. I'm going to do I'm going to do something a little different to make it just stand out of rather than just a black armored Astarte. Uh, I will be using some stencils for the company logo along with the company number. Along with I'm going to maybe take some artistic liberties with the armor not just in regards to, like, battle damage, that kind of stuff, but more along the lines of maybe, like, highlights that, you know, just to show off a little bit more of the armor so it doesn't, like, get lost everywhere. But 
I think I've rambled on long enough about that, so let's go to the workbench, take a better look at the figure and the weapon that it comes with, along with the paints that I'm going to be using, and we're going to get started now. Okay, so here we have the box with the Astartes in it, so let's get him freed. I'm going to try and do this and see if it works, and... Okay, the snap thing didn't work, but okay, so here we have the base Astartes figure, and I gotta say, it is very surprisingly heavy, and oh, damn, that's the color I forgot to get. Oh, well. Um, but yeah, this is the Astartes figure, and I gotta say, it is pretty well detailed. Um, here, the back of it. It's got, you know, decent, well, <laughs> somewhat decent articulation. Can't lift its arms too high because of, like, the giant shoulder pauldrons. But also, it's not designed to go that high, but anyway. Yeah, the, uh... The hell is this thing called again? The Assault Plasma Incinerator. Yeah, there, there we go. God, it's such a mouthful. But, yeah, this is... I gotta say, again, very, very nice, very well detailed. I mean, it looks cool. And then we have the jetpack form. So, and he also comes with this really nice little figure stand that says Warhammer 40,000 on it. Damn bugs. Uh, the paints I'm going to be using are going to be as followed. Um, I have Abaddon Black. I have Mephiston Red. It's mainly really going to be for the eyes, but I think I'm going to be... I've seen some of the bolts for the Raven Wings where they're mostly red, silver, and black, so I think we'll do that with the Incinerator as well. Um, we have some Wraith Bone. And also a something called necron compound it says it's a dry i'm honestly not 100 percent sure what the hell that means uh but i'm hoping this will mix nicely with the abaddon black to make a nice gunmetal. and also for a wash i got uh null no, none 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 no, no, this stuff uh which basically seems to be the universal wash for every warhammer figure i've ever seen so, my idea is going to go as followed. Um, obviously, armor is going to be the black. For the joints, I'm thinking of trying to mix the black with this uh, Necron compound to make the uh, to make a uh, a very nice gunmetal. I hope. If not, I may have to uh, delve into my test stores stuff for that, which I really don't want to. I'd rather just keep everything in one, but I'm going to do what I can. Uh, for the Wraith Bone, I'm going to be using this in order to do the company logo on the left pauldron, the chapter logo on the right pauldron, and I'm also going to do the chest crest with that as well. And the main reason I'm doing that is because, again, the reference photo I had found didn't really have any gold accents on it, or at least nothing that seemed gold to me. And it seemed like this was kind of like a white or a bone color. So that's why I want to go with that. Uh, I'm also going to see if I can hopefully make a... Uh, emblem or the um, the Ravenwing logo for the back of the jetpack as well and then once everything is all painted put them back together see how we came out but yeah for the plasma incinerator I'm gonna try and follow the 
the way that the uh, the bolters kind of go, which is like silver down at the bottom, red bodies. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, this is this is definitely going to be, a, I think, a lot of fun. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. I know I have my black vinyl die over here on the side. I I have a feeling I probably won't use it, or if not, once everything is taken apart, I may just use that as the base coat and then just start hand painting everything. Uh, but yeah, I also, if you notice here, I have my Cricut because that's what I'm going to be cutting the decals out on. I'm going to try and get as much detail in the video as possible since I've never really done anything like this other than when, I should say, when Arlene did the Magnus figure. Um, but I'm going to try and give you the step-by-steps of how things are going, what I'm doing, that, that kind of stuff, and really kind of go at it from there. So I'm going to start taking the figure apart so I can get that broken down and then I'll start prepping the pieces for actual paint at that point. So see you in a minute. Okay, so I've broken this down basically by hand. I was able to pop out most things uh, very easily. The only things that I couldn't do were the actual feet. So the feet are staying on. Um, there really isn't too much of a joint difference, and in order to paint into the little crevices that I need to, I can just move it to the side and get paint in there. I do have to say, I got one thing. Okay, this was so nice that the molds actually have this in here, but for the pauldrons, so you don't get them confused, they actually do have an R and an L in them so you know which one's right and which one's left so that was actually really neat but yeah I just wanted to go over that um I still have to prep the pieces for actual painting um I have some 70% isopropyl alcohol that I'm just going to wipe everything down with to just get all the oils and greases and all that kind of stuff with that and then uh start and then just hit it with the vinyl dye to again get a base coat on it so this way I have some, so this way everything has something to work with. So I'm going to do that and then I uh, will probably touch base after that dries. Okay, so I was able to find a actual company number that I can make into a stencil. Uh, it looks like my Astartes is going to be in company two. So it's not a Black Knight, he's not a support fire, he is an attack trooper, but hey, it's what I'm going to go with. I was thinking about actually making him uh, part of the Ninth Company, because in the Codex Supplement, the Hellblazer in there was part of the Ninth Company, but I'm just going to go with the Second Company, because that's what I was able to get. Like I said, it's not going to be 100% lore friendly, but it's what I got, so... I'm going to do these on the Cricut so I can get the stencils. Those are right now, the actual pieces right now are drying with the uh, vinyl dye. So I wanted to get the stencils done beforehand. And I'm actually thinking about it now. Um, I may be making more than one copy of it because I have the left pauldron, the right pauldron, and then the jetpack. So yeah, it might actually be beneficial to do more than just one copy of these. So after I do these, I'm probably going to duplicate those, make a second set, and this way I'll have about three copies each. Fingers crossed I don't need them all, but they'll be there if I need them. So. Okay, so it's day two of painting my Astartes figure, and it's coming along not bad. Um, my... Necron compound I know is supposed to be a dry but I'm sorry but this seems a little too too dry so I think my Necron compound was not the best but thankfully I had oh, that was the closed bottle I had some uh, silver acrylic that I'm going to wind up using and actually I already have I've mixed it with a little bit of the Abaddon black I uh, need to mix up a little more, but I think I'm going to be doing a little more silver than the black that time around, because 
I'll show you on the bigger piece. So I don't know how well this is going to show up on camera with all the piss poor lighting that I have, but uh, you can kind of see here that it's it still looks black, but it has a nice sheen and. I mean, it's not bad. It definitely looks like a gunmetal, and it definitely looks like it's a different color than what is already kind of pre-existing. So I'm kind of happy with that. Right now, I'm just trying to work on the Astartes eyes, and it's coming along as best as I can. So that's where it stands right now. Uh, once I make a little bit more of a notable progress, I will showcase that. So... Uh, check back in a few. Okay, so update. Um, I'm honestly not sure what actually got recorded because when I looked to see where I was at, the thing wasn't recording. So I have started working on the assault plasma incinerator, and I gotta say, so far it's coming along better than I had anticipated. I'm gonna kill this fly that keeps flying around me. Um, I still have to do the silver. Uh, there's a little bit of touch up on the red that I still want to do. Um, but I'm actually really happy with how this blue is looking. Um, it looks pretty spot on to what I saw in the picture. And how I got this blue was I did a little bit of, uh, paint mixing. And what I used was this gray sear and some of this Achillean green, which for some reason is blue. Um, but yeah, I used those two to make the, I guess the lights or the energy portion, the, well, the light, the scope, and then that vent piece on the uh, incinerator. And I gotta say, it's fairly spot on. I'm quite impressed with it. So all that's left is a little bit of cleanup and touch up. And then the silver, and then I got it. Well, I got, I still have, okay, it's not almost all, all done. I still have to do the wash on everything. But yeah, once the wash goes on and dries, this is done. I may do a clear coat, a matte clear coat on it just to seal it up. But yeah, we're almost done with this. I'm, I gotta say, I'm quite impressed with it. So I'm going to just let that dry up a little bit. Uh, Hopefully the paint won't dry out too, too much. And then uh, keep moving forward. So, yeah. Okay, so we're on day three of the build now. And I gotta say I'm making progress. I've already started a little bit. And I have found out that, and I'm sure I'm going to add a note prior to this. But just this is my actual acknowledgement of it. Yeah, I realized where I thought the dry compound was actually completely dried out. No, this is actually how it's supposed to be, so. All right, um, I have been working with it for a little while now, and I have went and I've kind of gone and updated the weathering on the legs, and I gotta say, I'm much more happy where this is. Uh, I was actually able to get a lot more dry brushing around the tip of the boots, to make them look a little bit more worn, same thing around the knees, and along with the elbows, I've added a lot more, so it looks like, you know, definitely a good amount of wear and tear. Uh, I'm also, I even was able to get a very nice around the knuckles of the hand, a bit of dry brushing around there, which I'm very happy with. Um, I'm still going over the pieces. Maybe I'll do an overhead time-lapse shot of it. I don't know. Um, but yeah, the overall, overall the Necron compound is now working for what I actually need it for, which is dry brushing. So uh, the silver acrylic was a good idea to do the, uh, the gunmetal parts of it. But now I'm going to go over and I'm going to start dry brushing all the edges and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to save the stencils kind of for a last thing because I still need to add another coat of wraith bone onto the chest plate. <laughs> Bless me. Um, so I'm not working with the wraith bone right now. I'm only working with the Necron, the Necron compound. Uh, so I'm 
trying to get all the dry brushing done first, and then I'm going to go and finish off those details. And then I think at that point, the Astartes will be ready to... Oh, sorry, I kind of neglected the backpack. I haven't done anything with this yet. I'm still trying to figure out exactly what I want to do, other than just, you know, paint the vents silver and a little dry brushing here and there. But, yeah, I think once that's done, the Astartes will be ready to go back together, which will actually be really cool. And the last thing I'll have to do is this thing, which, again, I... I have my reference to it, it's just a matter of trying to think of the best methodology of actually putting paper, you know, thought and paper to product. So, yeah, so let's get back at it. Okay, so I have the figure all together again, and all I can say is, wow, it was a lot easier to disassemble than reassemble this thing. For the most part, everything did kind of go back together okay, except for the legs. The legs and the lower torso were a bitch to put back together. Uh, I actually wound up taking the heat gun and warming up the joints for the legs along with the ball joint that connects the lower abdomen to the waist to actually get them back in. Other than that, everything else kind of snapped back together and... I have to say, so far, I'm really liking how uh, my Astartes is coming out. It's, I think it's really nice. I still have to weather it, though, uh, and for that I'm going to use the null oil. And I wanted it all together when I weathered it. I didn't want to weather individual pieces because if I'm going to weather it, it's going to be an all-together weather. So that's why I kind of did that. Um yeah, the last thing I have to do is the incinerator, and then I'll do the final reveal and my final thoughts on this project. So, see you in a second. Okay, so my studies figure is now complete and finished, and I gotta say I'm really, really happy with how he came out. It, this was a very big learning experience for me because... While I have made, like, Nerf blasters and other dart flinging blasters over the years, I've never really done a completely custom figure before. Not to mention the detail work of the, uh, the armor, the trying to fill in the other plates, the, inc the detail that I put on the incinerator... Uh, the dry brushing, the stenciling. This, honestly, was all foreign concepts to me, but I have to say, for the most part, they all worked out really well, and I am very, very happy with it. The, I mean, just overall, this, it came out really nice. I have to say, I think my favorite thing that I did that actually, uh, to look on this, besides the stenciling, which, again, looks really good, was actually the legs. Because, granted, yes, they did have some built-in uh, battle damage, but adding the silver to it to just highlight it was just such a nice little addition, and especially around the boots where I kind of just really, really put on a lot of that dry brushing to really look like you is like trudging through it all so even though i know the raven wings are mainly you know kind of like a biker unit but still other than that i have to say my favorite piece on this actually is the incinerator cannon because wow it to me this came out beautifully um it's not as much detail as the original uh reference picture that i used but it still came out really nice and overall, I am really, really happy with this. I mean, is this a professional-looking Astartes? Dear God, no. I mean, if you think that, awesome. My opinion, hell no. Um, but I have to say, honestly, for me, being my first real-time attempting something like this, this ain't half bad. And I'm honestly very impressed with myself on that one. So I'm sorry, but I'm kind of giving myself a pat on the back for that. Uh, but yeah, 
this was a really fun learning experience and a really fun project, to be perfectly honest. It was a little stressful at times trying to figure out what was working what wasn't, but everything came together, so I'm very grateful for that. But that's, I think, where I'm going to end it for this video. So thank you all very much for joining us. And again, if you enjoy the content we put here on the channel, please always throw us a like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Let me know how you think my Raven Wing came out, or have you ever made a Warhammer figurine of your own, mini, larger, or any kind of model? Uh, if you got any tips and tricks for me, please let me know in the comments down below. I definitely use them. And, ooh, don't forget to click that little bell icon. Otherwise, you may not know when me and Arlene are doing our silliness here on the channel. But again, thank you all very much for joining me. I'll see you guys next time. Later.